Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the concept of inversion, which applies both to intervals and triads. Uh, so with intervals, it's really, really easy to invert. So if you look at this first thing where I have a C to a B, all I'm going to do to invert this interval is take the bottom note and make it the top note. So this becomes... So we think about what the uh, the interval actually is. We have a C to a B, so we count that, we get a seventh. Uh, we say, does B belong in the key of C major? It does. So we have a major seventh. This one, B to C, does C belong in the key of B major? Nope. So it's a minor second. Okay, so uh, that's all I've done all the way along here, is take the bottom note and turn it into the top note. That's all we're doing is inverting the interval, turning it basically upside down. So rather than going through and uh, try to figure out all these intervals one by one, uh, I, you know, something that I whipped up before. And of course, you can go back and pretend you didn't see any of that and work them out on your own if you need more practice. What I prefer to do is trying to figure out some sort of pattern here. So we have in this first one the major turns into a minor. In the second one the minor third turns into a major sixth. In the third one this perfect stays perfect and in this fourth one the augmented becomes a diminished. And that's what it, that's true for every interval. So the major will always become minor in its inversion. The minor will always become major and the perfect will always stay perfect. With diminished and augmented, a diminished will always become an augmented interval, and vice versa. Uh, the numbers are also helpful. So the 7 plus 2 is 9, right? So it's 3 plus 6, 5 plus 4, and 3 plus 6 again. So you'll know that you've done the inversion and figured out the intervals correctly if both these patterns are true and the, uh, the numbers add up to 9. So that's really all there is to interval inversion. So let's look at triad inversion. So here we have a uh, basic C major triad that we, we looked at last time. In the second measure, I've moved the notes around so it's no longer in root position. Basically what I've done is I've taken that lowest note and I've moved it up uh, to turn it into the highest note. This is what we call first inversion. In the second one, I've taken the first inversion chord and moved the lowest note of that up to the top. That's what we call second inversion. So if you see either a first or second inversion chord, resist the urge to look at the lowest note uh, to tell yourself what the, what the name of the chord is. You have to get it back to root position and then look at the lowest note. So in this case we'd have to move the C back down and that would make it line, line, line. In this case, we could either move the C down and the E down, or we could just move the G up and have it be space, space, space up there. Uh, so root position, first inversion, second inversion. To codify that a little bit more clearly, when we talk about triads, we talk about the lowest note, which we've decided is the root, the middle note, which is the third, a third above the root, and the top note, which is the fifth. So anytime you see a first inversion chord, it means that the third of the chord is on the bottom. So I could move that G up there, and it would still be a first inversion chord. It doesn't, it, uh, it doesn't matter that the root isn't on the top in this one. Uh, same thing with this. The fifth is on the bottom of a second inversion chord. So I could move the C up there. It doesn't matter where the other notes are. It only matters what the lowest note is. So first inversion, the third is in the bass, the second inversion, the fifth is in the bass, and of course root position, the root is in the bass. So let's look at a chord and see if we can figure out uh, first of all what inversion it is and then what the name of the chord will be. So to figure out what inversion it is we kinda have to put it back in root position to figure out what uh, member of the chord is on the bass. So we look at this we have a D flat an F flat and an A flat. So if we do that, uh, we've got it in its space, space, space. 
and so that's our root position it's in three consecutive spaces so that's going to tell us that the D flat is the root of the chord so it's a D flat something chord so now let's go back to our original chord and say alright well we've got this A flat in the base of the chord so which chord member is the A flat that's right it's the fifth and so that means that this original chord is in second inversion and now just for practice let's figure out what kind of D flat major chord this is not major chord <laughs> okay D flat to F flat is a minor third and F flat to A flat is a major third so this is a D flat minor chord and that's that's all there is to inversion